The Browns might just catch a huge break this Sunday in New Orleans against the Saints, and that break might be history. I'll explain what I mean in just a moment, but really quickly, make sure to go ahead and like today's video. Scroll on down and hit that thumbs up button if you have not already. I just want everyone that's a routine viewer of the channel to make sure they always like the video because it does help grow the channel immensely. So it may seem like a no big deal to you, but it really does help me out a ton. So if you enjoy the free content we put out, all I ask is like the video. But what I did was I looked back at all the interim head coaches since 2020 as the Browns prepare to face the New Orleans Saints, who have an interim head coach, Darren Rizzi, who coached his first game on Sunday in a win over the Atlanta Falcons. And when you go back and you look at all the interim head coaches since 2020, there are 11 in total. And I'm a big believer in the interim head coach boost. When a team fires their head coach and they name an interim, I feel like the interim just brings in a little bit of energy and some new fresh ideas that Sunday, and the players tend to get up a little bit more for that game than under the previous head coaching regime, which was clearly going the wrong direction since they made a fire. So, went back and I counted all the interim head coaches first and second games as the Browns prepare to face Rizzi in his second game as the interim. And... Going back from 2020 to present day, interim head coaches in their first game are 5-6. and six. So the boost definitely has some legs to it because these are all teams that are well below 500, and they are nearly 500 in their first game with the interim. Now, the second game is really not that far off from the first game. In fact, if Rizzi were to win against the Browns on Sunday in his second game, it'd be dead even. But what is drastically different is the point differential. In the first game under the interim head coach, they have a plus 19 point differential. Second game, down to negative 22. I mean, we're looking at nearly a 40 point point differential from first week with the interim to second week with the interim. The magic, the lust, it all kind of wears off after the first game, and then they come crashing down to earth. So, with that in mind, who you got this Sunday? Browns or Saints? I understand that at 2-7, and seven, it's hard to get very excited or motivated for every single Sunday, but we only get so many of them of the year, so I'm not going to let them go by without being excited about them. So I'm going with the Brownies. Let me know who you got down below in the comment section. Now, for anyone that just wants to see the Browns lose because you want to see them get a better draft pick, need I remind you this is a team that has had lots of early first-round draft picks, and they continue to lose after every single one. So I am against tanking. I mean, not just for the Browns specifically, but in general. It sounds like a half-good idea midway through the season, but it doesn't usually hit as well as you think it does, right? If we thought Trevor Lawrence would be the next, like, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck. Hasn't really worked out well for the Jags, has it? I mean, if the Texans had batted down that Hail Mary, two, or sorry, if they had not caught that Hail Mary and two-point conversion against the Bears and got the first overall pick, Bryce Young might be their quarterback right now instead of C.J. Stroud. So we always think tanking is a one-way ticket to success once you know the season is lost, but there is a lot of truth to you have to keep a winning culture in the locker room. It's not a switch. You can't just go from losing intentionally to, okay, now that we got the first overall pick, we're going to flip the switch back on and we're going to go back to winning. No, I want to see a locker room with winners in it. Right now, the Browns have the fourth pick in the NFL draft. How about there being one, two, three, four, five teams with just two wins and a boatload of teams with three wins? So the race to the bottom is still very much up in the air. My guess is it's not going to be the Cleveland Browns, though. We look at the remainder of their schedule, and it's not very easy. I mean, the Saints at three and seven is the easiest game they have remaining. From here on out, Steelers on Thursday night. Then they go to Denver on Monday night. The Broncos are 5-5. Five and five, Come back and play Pittsburgh on the road. The undefeated Chiefs. The Bengals who are heating up. The Dolphins who just got to it back and knocked off the Rams on the road. And then you end the year in Baltimore. So there are no easy gimme games, uh, especially even for a 2-7 and seven team, in the remaining games of their schedule. So... I understand that tanking sounds like a fun idea, but I am against tanking, and if it happens naturally, so let it be. The Browns have done that on their own plenty of times, but my prediction is the Browns are going to finish with a 6-11 and record. I think they can find four more wins. I think they can find one on Sunday against the Saints, and then three more after that. 
maybe one more divisional win between two against Pittsburgh and one against Baltimore and one against Cincinnati. That gets up to four wins. Maybe they surprise the Broncos on the road or catch the Dolphins sleeping in Cleveland in December. I think they can get to six wins and probably finish with the round. Pick number six or seven in the NFL draft. Now, before we get to the second half of today's video, which is all about players to watch for in the second half of the season, since this season is not going to be a playoff season, I do want to fill you guys in on a new sponsor of ours, and that is Tushy. Holiday Gifting 101. Why drop two or three Benjamins on a cooler that will get used some of the time when you can spend a fraction of the cost on a bidet your whole household will use all of the time? The Tushy Bidet easily attaches to your existing toilet without the need for additional plumbing or electricity. People who have made the switch to Tushy use up to 80% less toilet paper. No more clogged toilets. Save your money and your derriere at the same time. Now take it from someone who lived in Japan growing up and saw how they master the art of the bidet and also hands-free trips to the bathroom. So take it from me when I say it is a game changer. Give the gift of practical luxury that benefits everyone in your household. For a limited time, our listeners get 10% off their first bidet order when you use code CHAT at checkout. That's 10% off your first bidet order at hellotushy.com slash chat with promo code CHAT. And don't forget to give us a shout out while you're there and let them know who sent you. Go to hellotushy.com slash chat for the best gift this holiday season. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. So on our Sunday video, we talked about some of the changes I want to see the Browns either make in the buy or just changes that could be, you know, in the process. More youngins, Cedric Tillman, Mike Hall, Isaiah McGuire, start playing for the future. Warm up Dorian Thompson Robinson after a three interception performance by Jameis last time out. His lease should not be extremely long. And then also, the coaching staff needs to resurrect the secondary. It was supposed to be one of the strongest points of this roster, it has been one of the weakest points. The Browns have one interception all season, they have five takeaways tied for last. It's got to start in the back. But here are three players that I'm going to watch for throughout the second half of the season. When I first started watching football, my dad told me, hey, watch one player every single snap and see what their job and their responsibility is. And that was the easiest way for me as a little buckaroo to fall in love with football. And what I saw was everyone's got their own very unique responsibility. And so while you watch the second half of the season, I'd recommend taking the same approach because as a team, there's not a whole lot to watch for. But at the left tackle position, Dewan Jones should be someone we keep an extra close eye on. He's made two starts so far at left tackle. He's given up zero sacks, two penalties, and 146 snaps. If Jones can play well at left tackle, this could be a huge a leaving need for Cleveland going into the NFL draft because this is not a draft that has a clear consensus top number one no doubter at left tackle. Will Campbell at LSU is getting a lot of smoke. The Texas left tackle or Texas right tackle is getting a lot of attention. But we've seen previous drafts where there are tackles that push for being a top three pick. That's unlikely to happen in this draft. So instead of forcing a pick at left tackle, if you don't love Will Campbell, Dewan Jones plays well the rest of the year, you could have that box checked and you can devote your attention to another need on the roster. Also, we don't need to see any more of Jed Wills. I, I feel like he used a poor choice of words when describing why he sat out the Ravens game, calling it a business decision, but he also went on to be pretty detailed in the injury he was coming back from. So had he just said, I didn't play because I was injured, I don't think anyone would be all that upset with it, but calling it a business decision just from a headline standpoint is not going to sit well with the fan base. Now, before we get to the next two players to watch for, this is a point where you start to maybe pull back on being completely focused and dialed in on every single Cleveland Brown snap at 2-7. and seven. I don't like watching my favorite teams play in high leverage games at a bar because I feel like you spend too much time socializing rather than actually watching the game. But if your significant other wants to go out with their friends to watch the game, 
at two and seven, this is not the time to pick that battle. So what is your favorite bar in Cleveland? Let me know down in the comment section. If you don't live in Cleveland, shout out your favorite bar wherever you live. I just want to get some good references and some good suggestions down below in the comment section. Next player to keep an eye on, how about defensive end Isaiah McGuire? Especially with the trade of Zadarius Smith to the Lions, and then earlier this year, Alex Wright being lost with a season-ending injury. There is going to be a lot more Isaiah McGuire on screen, which... I'm excited for it because I feel like he has played well, especially as the season has gone along. We've seen improvement from being a healthy scratch week one to playing a good amount all the way up until week nine. I mean, look at the snaps we saw from his first game against the Jags in week two. I mean, it's not a tremendous jump, but from a percentage standpoint, going up 14%. That's something that's not done by accident. 26 snaps against the Chargers, the second most of the season, only trailing the Commanders in Week 5 when that game turned into a blowout. So we're seeing more of McGuire. I'm excited to watch the fourth rounder out of Mizzou if he can maybe establish himself as a rotational and legitimate defensive end. If the Browns don't find a pass rusher, they love to pair with Miles Garrett in the early stages of the draft. They could have a head start with McGuire. Third player to keep an eye on is Greg Newsom. I feel kind of exhausted by talking about Greg Newsom when it comes to being a potential trade target or trade candidate for the Browns. Ultimately, he was not shipped off before the NFL trade deadline. My guess is that's likely a result of him having a bad season. I don't know who would be calling the Browns to trade for Greg Newsom, knowing that he's got a fully guaranteed $13 million contract next year. There were likely very little suitors, but if Newsom does not play well the rest of the season, the Browns are likely going to be looking to get that $13 million off their books and probably won't get much for it, but there could be a team out there that's willing to give up, like Jerry Judy, a six-round draft pick. I mean, the Browns got Judy and his entire fully guaranteed fifth-year option for a fifth and a six-round draft pick. So I could see the Browns, if things don't go well for Newsom all year long, and not just the first half of the season, going, hey, even if we don't get much, it could be a win just getting that $13 million off of our books and adding to our draft capital for 2025, adding a six-round draft pick, getting four six-rounders, maybe bundling three of those six-rounders to move up earlier into round five or round four of the draft. Andrew Barry loves to wheel and deal. He loves to make trades. But in order to make trades, he needs currency. He needs GM monopoly money. And the, one of the best assets a GM can have is draft picks. So if the Browns feel like Newsom is just not the long-term starter we envision him being, get $13 million off your salary cap, or at least some of it if a team is willing to split it with you. Get a measly six-round draft pick. Bundle it to trade up into round five or round four and try and find a quality rotational player in day three of the draft. So would you trade Greg Newsom after the season? I know that this is a topic that has been long discussed, but I do believe the next eight, nine, however many games are remaining in the year are going to be pivotal for Newsom's future in the land. Before we sign off, I do want to give some shout outs to the Brown and Orange Club. I missed you guys on Sunday with the bye week, but we will be back this Sunday for the Saints matchup. So appreciate everyone for being such loyal and devote supporters of the channel. If you want to get added to the Brown and Orange Club to get shout outs all season long, hang out with us during our watch parties, $50 super chat, and we'll throw your name on screen for everyone watching to see. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Check us out on Instagram, by the way. If you enjoy our content, we post content over there as well. Trying to grow the Instagram following, make it one of the biggest at chat sports. So if you love the brownies and you're competitive like myself, Browns Report IG, hit that follow button.